Please sit down. Thank you, sir. Your name, please. Chatriya Kavan, sir. Chatriya Kavan. 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 And what is DJ? DJ? D stands for Deepamala, my mom's name, sir. And uh, J is for Jagannath, my father's name. Oh, so this is a standard practice. You write your names like that, or is it peculiar to you? So my parents uh, kept wanted to keep both my mom, mother's as well as father's name. Usually, it's the father's name which is kept as the initial, sir. And both parents are working. Yes, sir. So your father is from uh, state service or IAS? IAS, sir. Which so batch is he? 2004 batch, sir. So currently, he is secretary to government of Tamil Nadu, sir. Okay. And your mom? She is in the social sector. She has her own organization, which is called the Research and Action Center for Local Democracy. She okay. is the founder of that organization. Sir. Okay. Very nice. And you are going for the first time to UPSC? Yes, sir. That's great. So, kindly tell us something more about yourself. Sir, I am 23 years old. I was born in Trichrapalli, Tamil Nadu. I completed my schooling from uh, Good Shepherd in Chennai and where I emerged as the state topper of Tamil Nadu in standard 12 board exam. Subsequently, I pursued BCom honours from uh, Lady Shiram College, University of Delhi, where I was elected as the general secretary of the students' union. Uh, further, I was chosen to represent my college at the National University of Singapore as an exchange student. My interests in general include scribing for the visually challenged, volunteering for animal rescue, focus meditation and traveling. And I'm also a black belt holder in karate. Sir. How many brothers and sisters are you? I have one sister. Younger, <coughs> to, younger to you? Elder sister, sir. She's working? Yes, sir. She's working, sir. She's uh, currently chosen for a fellowship with the Lieutenant Governor of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So she will be there in Jammu and Kashmir for two years, sir. Okay. How come from Tamil Nadu they? So they choose uh, uh, people from all across the country. And uh, they chose 10 fellows, and out of which my sister is one of the fellows. Very nice. So, can you tell me, you know, uh, Madras, when did Madras become Tamil Nadu? So, it was in 1967 when uh, the uh, it was a long process actually. There were uh, certain uh, linguistic uh, issues and then uh, certain provinces and certain areas like the Telugu areas. Me, I didn't ask for the process. I said okay. when that set up. Yes, and when did it become Chennai? In 1990s, sir. 90s? Yes, sir. It means what? 90s is 9 years? Sir, I'm not sure of the exact year. I'm just aware that. But you tell me Singapore was a small fishing village. What happened transformation? Who did it? And what are the main features of the transformation? So there are many factors which contributed to the development of Singapore. One major reason is Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. He, he, he was the architect of the modern Singapore. He was the main reason behind the advanced development. And apart from that, certain... Have you read his book? No, sir, I haven't read his book. You have heard about it? Yes. Sir. Hmm. Okay. So, so uh, apart from that, they focused on economic development, especially the port-based development, out of which the majority of the revenue of the Singapore government comes from the ports. And apart from that, they invested a lot in the education system and the teachers especially. Okay. Mm. Only the top 5% of the qualifying candidates essentially enter into the teaching uh, background. So over there, it's they constantly assess and monitor the teachers subsequently focusing more on the quality of the education. So the education also plays a major role. And apart from that, the maintenance of law and order ensures the safety of citizens. So I think overall many factors have contributed to the development of Singapore. History is your subject. Yes. And we generally say that we learn from history. But I think in India, we never learn from history. We never learned, so to say. For centuries, we were invaded by people. People like Mahmood Ghazni came, you know how many times. He should have learnt after his first invasion. He learnt nothing. Sir, I would like to differ with your opinion, sir. Because I think that it's not that we haven't learnt anything. Because there are certain shortcomings, of course. Because as you said, Mahmood Ghazni invaded a lot of times. But then, even if we take the case of the British invasion during the colonial period, 
there were many leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, etc., who brought the masses together and we fought. Well, you are coming to it, 19th century. I am talking right from 7th, 8th century onwards. For 5, 6 centuries, you learn nothing, and then when you start something, you say, You've learned. This is unfair. But the thing is, at that time, throughout the world, there were various armies and it was all about the rulers conquering more and more no, kingdoms. But which country has suffered most atrocities than India? None. Sir, I, what I meant to say was that even within India, we have a lot of invasions and then the territories constantly change between rulers. So it's, it's not that we haven't learned anything, sir, because at that time... No, it's a weak defense. Because okay. Give me some other strong reason if you have. Otherwise, let's move on. We should have learnt after the first century, our first invasion. And there was a wave of invaders, starting from earlier times, then the slaves came, then right up to Nadir Shah. So, but there were many rulers who withstood such kind of invasions, like the Vijayanagara Empire. They established a very prominent empire, which forces, which actually uh, Let's, say, okay, let's, let's talk of something else. Let's talk of women literacy. What is the lit women literacy rate in India? Sorry, sir, not aware of the exact. Which is the state which has the lowest literacy? No idea. Tamil Nadu? No, sir, Tamil Nadu has a good uh, literacy. What rate? Sir, it is. So yes. it is nine. So it's above 80% that I'm sure. My last question is, what are the internal security challenges to India? So there are various challenges. One major challenge is the Naxalism, which is uh, there in uh, certain red corridor states, especially like Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, etc. And apart from that, we also have the hybrid warfare, which is coming up these days. We have hybrid a, warfare. Yes, sir. Where? The use of cyber warfare and uh, using. Well, of where is the hybrid warfare? You said. So the hybrid warfare essentially includes the cyber warfare and other forms of warfare apart from the physical military warfare which is taking place. That's what I meant, sir. Mm. So there are many cyber attacks which are taking place. Even the recent Mumbai power outage, etc. Okay. And, uh, then what else? So there are many else. riots which are happening. Right. Uh, yes. Sir. Now you talked of the left-wing extremism. Yes, sir. Six, seven decades. Why have we failed to sort it out? Is it incompetence? So I wouldn't say that they have completely failed to sort it out because uh, there has been a drastic improvement and the uh, left-wing areas especially have reduced to a great extent these days and it is also because of the... But should a country take seven decades and still it is there? Sir, I think it is quite unfortunate that it has taken so long but at the same time I think we have come a long way and uh, the, the areas as I said, the red corridor areas have reduced to a great extent. Thank so you. Priya, yes, sir. were you to be the district collector in Tamil Nadu, you could choose the district you want to be district collector. What would be your role and responsibilities? Sir, I would have various responsibilities as the district collector. One major responsibility is uh, the maintenance of law and order in the district, ensuring that th there is peace prevailing throughout the district. And uh, secondly, the social development of uh, various sectors, be it the health, education, agriculture, rural development, and so on. So uh, that is uh, the other, other aspects. Sir. And uh, apart from that, I think uh, good uh, coordination with the rest of the districts, with the state government, as well as with the central government on the whole. I think uh, these are the overall responsibilities that I And the have. challenges? Sir, I think it depends from, uh, I mean, it varies from district to district because there are certain districts where the socio-economic indicators are very backward. Oh, Ramanathapuram, you are district collector of Ramanathapuram. What would be the challenges? So the socio-economic indicators in that particular district are poor compared to the other districts. Though we say that Tamil Nadu as a whole is a developed state, certain districts like Ramanathapuram, Arielur, etc. are not performing very well. So my essential duty would be to ensure that the performance in the health sector, education, skill development, etc., are on par with the other districts. 
So I think these would be the major challenges. Does Ramanathapuram have an agriculture problem, irrigation problem, water problem? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware of the details. Okay. Sri Lankan Tamil issue in Tamil Nadu is it no longer an issue that excites emotions? So it, we still face the implications of the issue throughout the country and especially in the case of Tamil Nadu because recently the Sri Lankan economic crisis has led to many refugees. Uh, please answer the question. Okay. Is the Sri Lankan Tamil issue not relevant anymore? Sir, it is relevant, sir. Where is it relevant? So because of the refugee issue, there are many refugees who are coming from Sri Lanka and they are Are they still coming? Yes, sir. I am not are. talking about the current refugee issues, I am talking about the Sri Lankan Tamils. Are they still coming? So there are many refugees uh, who are there in uh, Tamil Nadu. Where are they staying? Do they have camps there? Yes, sir. We have rehabilitation camps. Which is the biggest camp? It's in Ramanathapuram. Okay. Sorry, sir. I wasn't there. Mandapam. Okay. So, you didn't answer my question. Why is it no longer an issue? There's no more politics to be played around it. Sir, at that time, because of the civil war, it was at the peak of the tension. So, I think that the emotions were very high. But subsequently, because the LTTE and other groups were uh, essentially destroyed and after that, the Sri Lankan government took over, I think the tensions aren't that high. But still, we do face implications because of the uh, refugees and uh, the, the gender tension between the Tamil people. Can you tell me something about the 13th Amendment to the Sri Lankan Constitution, which concerns Sri Lankan Tamils? Sir, it, this amendment essentially deals with uh, devolving more powers to the... Uh, Has it been implemented? No, sir, not effectively. That so is is that a big issue? Yes, sir, that is a, that, that issue is uh, still prevailing. So there are many Tamil leaders who are fighting for uh, that particular issue because the powers haven't been devolved to the provinces and uh, they haven't been recognized as well, sir. When the IPKF went to Sri Lanka, did they win the war or did they lose the war? Sir, they were on the, the essential reason was that they have to bring peace between Sri Lankan government and the NTTA and in that particular purpose, I think they succeeded, sir. Between who? The Sri Lankan government and the NTTA. Tell me something about the Sri Lankan India fisherman issue. So this issue is actually a major issue between uh, the state of Tamil Nadu and uh, Sri Lanka. That is uh, actually because the international maritime boundary line, though it was fixed and the agreements were made in 1974, constantly fishermen from both the sides. They don't recognize the IBL. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The crossover, fishermen from. Uh, yes, sir. There Tamil is also the issue of the usage of bottom trawling by the fishermen of Tamil Nadu which is uh, constantly bothering the fishermen of Sri Lanka because they think it's not sustainable and at the same time it's the, the catch of the f Sri Lankan fishermen is also getting affected because of such answers. Why do the damage from fishermen <coughs> cross the IBL and cross uh, the international waters? Sorry, sir, I Why do they cross the international border, maritime border? So because they need to get more fish for their... But isn't there fish available in our waters? Why do they have to go in the waters of another country. So because they need more income to sustain their families. So that is the reason they venture out into deep waters to get more fish so that they will have better income for their families. And though they Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Mr. Yes, sir. You are aware that today Prime Minister Modi is having a virtual meeting with Mr. Biden. Sir. President Biden. Now, why would you think that this meeting is significant? So it is significant because of the current Russia-Ukraine conflict that is going on and also because uh, the interest of the USA right now focuses more on the Indo-Pacific region and India being a net security provider, it is a major stakeholder. So these are the two major reasons. And what do you think would figure in the discussion relating to the Ukraine-Russia conflict? So the USA is not particularly happy with the stance that India has taken, that is the abstention against uh, Russia in the UNSC. And apart from that, uh, the 
importing of oil from Russia, that also is a major concern of the USA because USA says that though it is only 1 to 2 percent of the oil imported by India, USA wants to ensure that that doesn't take place and uh, they are trying to uh, look into alternative uh, opportunities through which India can import oil. So these are some of the... Till now, what has been India's response to the US in regard to the criticism of India's policy? So India's response is that we focus on strategic autonomy. So it depends on us what kind of stance that we take in various uh, situations. It isn't that we are particularly allied to one particular nation or one particular bloc that we have to essentially ally all our interests with that particular nation. So that is the strategic autonomy is the stand of uh, US. And you referred to the abstention by India in regard to the war relating to Russia. Now, the US had moved a resolution in the General Assembly asking that Russia's membership of the UN Human Rights Council be suspended and India abstained. Uh, what is the Human Rights Council? Can you tell me some details about it? So the UN Human Rights Council is essentially the international uh, forum wherein uh, there are various member countries. Uh, at a time there are 47 member countries. So they sit together and look into issues of human rights violations consider, uh, which are undertaken by various member nations and if need be there is certain action which is taken against the member nations like relieving them from the council. And where is it located? Sir, according to my limited knowledge I think it is in Geneva sir. And uh, you said the number of members, how many members at the moment? Sir, as far as my knowledge is concerned, it is 47, sir. Correct. Uh, now, you would have been following events in Pakistan. Why do you think Imran Khan failed in the task of governing Pakistan and why he, he was voted out? So this is actually an issue which goes back for many decades. I think from the independence of Pakistan, from since the independence of Pakistan, consequently there have been various uh, prime ministers who have been ousted or who have not been able to render effectively the government because the military over there essentially dominates the whole country. So that this was actually no exception because uh, many of the leaders have been ousted in the same way, sir. And also the kind of economic management which was done by Mr. Imran Khan, he was not up to the mark. And uh, because he was in constant clash with the military leaders of the country, uh, this this particular situation has uh, resulted. Sir. Now, Imran Khan has praised India in some of his recent speeches. What is your assessment of that praise? Sir, I think it is a kind of strategy to divert the attention of uh, people towards the India-Pakistan relationship or something of the, uh, the external issue rather than focusing more on internal restructuring, sir. Would you take the praise at its face value or you think that that praise doesn't mean anything? No, I wouldn't take it at face value, sir. Because of the currently considering the kind of situation that this remark is being made, I wouldn't take it at face value. Last question. India and the US are also holding from today the 2 plus 2 dialogue. Uh, who would be the main players in this dialogue, the main interlocutors? So the foreign minister and the defense minister of India and their counterparts of the US. Now who are the counterparts on the US side? The foreign secretary and the defense secretary. Sir. He is not called the foreign secretary there. Secretary of State. The Secretary of State. And who is the Secretary? In the papers every day. So Mr. Anthony Blinken. And the Secretary of Defense. Sorry, sir, I'm not able to recall. Okay. Um, what are the issues that you think would be taken up in, in that meeting? Apart from the Ukraine Russia dialogue. So currently there is a lot of converging interest between India and USA. So there, there would be the issue of, uh, I mean, more cooperation on climate technology, on uh, trade issues, <coughs> on, on defense aspects, etc. These are some of the aspects. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. What is your first name? Chatriya, sir. Chatriya. Chatriya. <coughs> 
Tell me something about uh, gig workers, problem of gig workers. So the gig economy essentially provides a flexible uh, work, working environment for the workers, but at the same time there are various challenges. Like uh, when we take the case of social security provisions, because it is largely unorganized, the workers would not be able to get the benefits. And also the kind of flexible system also has the uh, disadvantage of hire and fire kind of environment wherein they aren't uh, provided job security. So I think these, would, these are the major challenges. Or they are called partners. Why they are called partners, not workers? By the these uh, companies, like Uber has a driver and partners. Sorry, sir, I'm not aware no. of the exact reason. Okay. You know, local bodies and. Uh, what is the present state of affairs? Local bodies. Sir, I think considering the constitutional amendment, the 73rd and the 74th of 1992, I think we have come a long way in uh, how we have done the governance of local bodies. But at the same time, I think there is a lot of scope to improve because uh, there is lack of citizen participation at the uh, grassroots level. Can you tell and something specific about Tamil Nadu? What is the position? Yes, sir. So one major issue is that though there is 50% uh, women reservation, uh, there is the issue of the husbands dominating their uh, role. So the Sarpanchpati issue is there. Sir. And secondly, the lack of infrastructure and uh, the technology services which are provided to the people, the e-service or the common service centers, these are all uh, the issues. Do they have any delegation of powers? Just like a center has some power, central list. Then there is a state list. States have those powers, right, late and all but local bodies, uh, are they given some by statute some powers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the panchayats, there are 29 subjects over which they have control. And for the urban local bodies, they have 18 subjects over which there is control. But that so is whether they have been transferred in Tamil Nadu or some other state, whichever you no, sir, not completely. Because uh, essentially the hold over the finances lies with the state government as well as the central government. So this is the major issue because they do not have uh, access to the proper resources. And at the same time, the infrastructure is also lacking at the ground level. Which is the state doing well in this case, delegation of these powers? Sir, as far as my knowledge is concerned, I would say Kerala, sir. What they have done? Sir, I'm not precisely aware of how the difference is taking place, but then overall the, the local bodies over there, they have better infrastructure, there is better devolution. I'll give you a hint. There are three F. Okay. They have transferred three F. The funds, functions and the functionary, sir. Funds, function and function. Yes, sir. So any other state has done that? Tamil Nadu? Tamil Nadu has done to a certain extent, sir, but I would say there is still a long way to go. Okay. So, any suggestion you want to give in that regard? What should be done to improve the position of local bodies? Sir, I think first of all, the Gram Panchayat Development Plans, that have to be, I mean, they have to be formed and implemented because I think for many panchayats that is not currently happening because without a plan, there cannot be proper implementation of policy. Okay, plan, who has to make plan? See, the panchayat has to make the plans so along panchayat. with the, yes sir. Panchayat or Gram Panchayat, Gram Sabha, as per the act and rules. Sorry sir, I'm not aware. No, what is, okay, what is nation state and what is a state nation, state's nation? Sir, I'm aware of the difference between nation and state. Uh, no, no, not that. Okay. Uh, political science subject was there with you, no? Bacon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. it was my gender collective, so it was yes. a minor subject. So there is a concept of uh, India. What is what is the India's position? Like in Europe, they are uh, nation states. Yes, sir. And uh, in India, what is the position? Are we nation state? So yes, sir. We are nation state. What is nation? 
the nation is actually uh, an identity which is uh, based on the socio cultural aspects of the people so ethnicity ethnicity yes sir and state is india has one ethnicity no sir what is north east north india south india <coughs> different cultures languages so characteristic of a nation or a language so though we have different languages and cultures ultimately we all of us belong to one particular nation so that is why india is yes. called as a nation so we are states or we are nation state this is nation state okay we are many nations but we are state is one state means political entity okay government yes. sovereignty is one yes good all the best thank you sir thank you so much our discussion with you is over